Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Tadic. I am Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Dear students, today we are going to talk about a very important aspect which is emerging uh, in our modern IT world. As you can see that on an average Indians are spending 4 to 5 hours on internet you know and on social media. So, we are creating lot of data and data privacy has become a very important issue. So, today we will try to understand what is the data privacy law, but before jumping to legal provisions in India and abroad, first we need to understand that why data privacy is important and what is data. And why this has become so important suddenly? So, like data, if I want to know your name, your sex, your educational background, your preferences, your political views, your religious views, your background, your likes, dislikes, you know, all that type of information we used to share with each other in our family, with our friends, and sometimes even with the government or other regulatory bodies. However, it was never an opportunity for the corporates to collect this data at the massive scale and use it for its commercial purposes. So, now nowadays when you suppose you are visiting a website, you know you are visiting, you are searching for something, suppose like you are, you are planning, even you are thinking that you know you are talking to someone on phone and say okay I am planning to visit Bangalore and I am planning to book my flight. So, that type of data, this is a data, this is an information, this is a data for someone. So, Google or some other websites or other social media platform, they are all listening your phone call as you understand, you know that when you install them, they ask all the approvals that we will record your uh, calls, your SMS, your WhatsApp, your contacts. So, by using the data, then they transfer, they sell that data to airline companies and then suddenly you observe that within few days you start getting lot of advertisements from the airlines companies, you know. So, you just spoke with someone or maybe you just went to Google and you search something that flight from uh, Delhi to Bangalore and then if you do it two or three times, suddenly if you go to your Facebook, you see that on the right side, you see the advertisement of airlines. It means that people are watching us, people are observing our behavior and as per our preferences and our behavior, they are trying to do business. So, there are two arguments in it, that what is wrong in it, you know, because we are not paying anything to them, like for the Google, Google is free. You know, we are not paying anything to Google, we are not paying anything to the Facebook, WhatsApp. So, all those services are absolutely free. So, how they will make money? So, their product is not Facebook, Google or WhatsApp, their product is our data. So, the more and more data they can collect from us and refine the data, do the data mining, create a pattern and then transfer data, that data to market players so that they can contact us. So, this is like one of the argument. However, in a democratic country where we believe accountability, transparency, then we must have rights to see that how they are using our data. Okay. Are they not manipulating with our data or they are not manipulating the entire society by throwing wrong data, wrong information, fake information in the society. So, students, it has become a very, very important point. Uh, and especially after 2010 when we started using social media, internet and nowadays lot of other new stuff are, are coming like for example, uh, Facebook is uh, coming up with metaverse, 
you know uh, and so many other companies nvidia microsoft they are also entering into this new technology so the data of human life will become one of the most important uh, discussion point in social political as well as business life some people even argues that in the last century 20th century the oil was the main thing you know if you have oil you can control the world you know you if you have energy you can control the world uh, but in 21st century they say that data is the oil data is the new oil if you have data if you know how to use that data you are the king okay so now big it companies are like the facebook uh, what's uh, facebook google uh, amazon netflix and all these big it giants you know they are collecting like billions and trillions uh, gigabytes of data every day and uh, we really don't know how they are doing their processing we really don't know right now it's a very confidential so this is a topic where the normal citizen or even the business houses they have to be very careful that what are the rules and regulations regarding the data privacy and how they can protect that their own data and finally for corporates they also need to understand that when they are collecting data from people they are the guardian they are the protector of that data the data should not be leaked it's very common in uh, so many industries that millions of data uh, got leaked in black market uh, in the deep internet market and then people are abusing that abusing that situation against the customers so as a business uh, person you should also understand that data uh, can be a good and a great tool to do business like data analytics is becoming a very important topic nowadays so like for example uh, if you have data and if you know the tools of data anal analytics you can do lot of prediction in the market you can design your business marketing sales production communication strategies as per the data anal analytical uh, pattern so this is a great opportunity for business houses but at the same time we, because we have data privacy laws now they are under legal obligation to follow the rules and regulations to protect uh, the data of the common man and not only protect the data but protect the dignity value reputation and finally some liberal ideas which we have developed in last uh, 200 300 years that, that's a democracy uh, equal uh, freedom of speech uh, freedom to choice you know all these things which we have developed uh, in our institutions like the courts and the journalism you know all these things which we have developed in last 300 years after a long struggle uh, should not be lost Uh, because of this you know massive uh, collection and exploitation of the data by the these big giants okay so with this background we will start our lecture basic concepts data protection it is the process of safeguarding important information from corruption and loss okay data is the large collection of information that is stored in a computer or on a network the importance of data protection increases as the amount of data created and stored continue to grow at unprecedented rates see first you need to understand that why this has become important because data collection was not a big issue but data storage was data storage and uh, data processing uh, used to be a very Uh, big challenge for the corporations like for example uh, in 1980s if you want to store 1 gb data then maybe you need to spend more than around like 100000 dollar that's almost like 70 lakh rupees you know so just to keep the 1 gb now i believe you must be laughing that e even in your mobile you have more than 120 gb storage you know so data storage has has come and data storage problem has been almost solved and processing is become very fast now uh, so the processing like for example if you look back in last 20 years the speed of internet speed of computer system the network cloud computing so all these things have increased the data processing speed at the 
top level like now what what speed we have like right now for the internet we are entering almost in 5g but 20 years back it was almost like 1g you could not even download a picture you know to just download a picture maybe you had to wait for one hour one and a half hour but now people are downloading entire videos photos the everything in few seconds okay so this is like a big change you know in terms of data collection and processing and storage and what is privacy the privacy is the claim of individuals groups and institutions to determine for themselves when how and to what extent information about them is communicated to others so privacy privacy is the claim of individuals groups and institutions to determine for themselves about when how and to what extent information about them is communicated to others see earlier the thought was that you are giving your data to these big giants and and obviously they are not charging anything from you so you can't claim on your data but the new philosophy the new legal and political ideologies uh, developed in last 20 years that no this is not the situation you are responsible for people's life or for their liberty and for dignity and if even if people are giving you the data uh, by using your free services uh, the people cannot lose their right over their data okay so there has to be some claim from the individuals and people and groups over their data need for data protection like according to internet and mobile association of india the digital india report 2019 there are about four, 504 million so it's almost like 50 crore uh, active web users in india and indian online market is second only to china okay 50 crore people are using internet right now in 2019 now and maybe in 2022 it should be more than 70 crore large collection of information about individuals and their online habits has become an important source of profit it is also a potential avenue for invasion of privacy because it it can reveal extremely personal aspects so see while we are using all these internet sources we are sharing lot of personal sensitive business as well as private information with them so basically when we are sharing with them all these uh, private information sensitive commercial information then obviously they have to protect that information and without your consent that information should not be shared with anyone okay so like you know profit is okay but in a democratic society we cannot allow corporations to exploit people's secrets companies governments and political find uh, political parties find it valuable because they can use it to find the most convincing ways to advertise to you online okay why it, it's it's becoming so much profitable for these it companies because the companies like the corporates government political parties now they are taking their services like the facebook twitter whatsapp google so these uh, interested parties they are using uh, their services for their own benefits okay like suppose if a political party wants to create a political agenda so they can invest maybe like they can give maybe 20 crore rupees ads to google or facebook or twitter or any other social media platform and then because that social media platform or that it company like the google and other they have got your data they know your preferences so they can do data filtering and data mining also like for example if they know that these x number of people are interested in this political ideology so first we should connect them you know we should connect them share this political ideology or propaganda with those people second they can check your uh, religious ideologies religious religious affiliation so anything which is connecting with your religion they can share with you so they can decide basically the point is that now we have given them so much power to decide for us that what we will hear and see on the internet so when you open the facebook you know when you open facebook or whatsapp or any other social media platform nowadays 
lot of things are coming to you like automatically you don't choose them like for example netflix when you open the netflix they will show you what they want you to see okay and then they expect that you choose from this thing because they have they are observing your pattern they are observing your favorites so as per your favorites they will recommend suppose like few uh, web series so they will choose now you know that out of this 10 series uh, you will like one so more or less they are deciding that what you will watch you will watch out of 10 one or two so maybe there are more than 1000 but they say okay you will see only uh, out of this 10 only one same thing with the uh, uh, print uh, uh, this you know kindle when uh, suppose you want to buy a book you go to a uh, amazon and they will show you some recommended books so ultimately they are limiting your choices also and what is data privacy data privacy is a guideline for how data should be collected or handled based on its sensitivity and importance data privacy is typically applied to personal health information and personal identifiable information okay this includes financial information medical records social security or id numbers and names birthplace and contact information so it's not like that we want to protect all types of data like for example data regarding your music choices you know what type of music you like okay so maybe we are not concerned too much about that particular aspect we are more concerned with very sensitive type of information like your health information suppose if they know that you have this particular disease you have you are facing a particular health issue so they can share your personal sensitive health issue problem with the companies who are trying to sell uh, their medicines okay or their remedies so this is how they are exposing yourself in open market okay because you want sometime you know you want to keep your personal health issues with yourself or with your doctor you don't want to share with everyone so this can be exposing yourself and personally identifiable information you don't want to be identified for everyone like you know you don't want that people should know your aadhar number your passport number your pin number your mobile number your email id these are very very sensitive information for you and you want to control that to whom you, uh, can you know access these type of information okay so that's a data privacy it's a basically guideline for how data should be collected or handled based on its sensitivity okay why data privacy is important data privacy concern applies to all sensitive information that organization handle including that the customer shareholders and employees often this information plays a vital role in business operations developments and finances data privacy helps ensure that sensitive data is only accessible to approved parties you know so you should decide that who can watch my data suppose if i am sharing my data with facebook then i don't want that without my consent facebook shares that information with the third parties okay it prevents criminal from being able to maliciously use data and helps ensure that organizations meet regulatory requirement so why i and at the same time what i want that facebook or banks or any other organization who is collecting this type of sensitive information from me like for example sometime on the payment site you know when you are buying something on amazon they ask your uh, bank details you know they ask your uh, credit card or debit card number cvv and everything so then your expectation is that that information should not be shared with everyone anyone without your consent at the same time the companies must create a mechanism whereas uh, such type of data is properly protected uh, from the criminals data privacy is enforced by data protection regulations non compliance may result in monetary fines and loss of brand authority so now let's see that how data protection laws have been created across the globe i first i will talk about the european union law gdpr and why gdpr because right now in india we don't have a data privacy law we have a bill like the bill means that it's going to be the law very soon but so currently we don't have any law okay so obviously when we don't have a law we have provisions which are going to be implemented maybe very soon 
So, it is better to see a law which is very similar to our uh, political and social system and we can learn from them that how the European Union or the European countries are adopting data privacy law. So, in future we can also follow the same type of standards. So, GDPR journal data protection regulation this the widespread usage of personal and sensitive data has raised the significance and protecting the data from loose and corruption. Global authorities have stepped in with regulatory compliance like GDPR. The GDPR emphasizes the personal data rights of EU residents including the rights to change, access, erase or transfer their data. It is a very interesting. So, right to change, access, erase or transfer their data. Personal data refers to any information that relates to an individual. This includes name, uh, physical traits, addresses, racial or ethical characteristics and biometrics data like DNA and fingerprints. Okay, so, this is all data and interestingly they talk about the EU residents. Okay, so, if any company is using the EU citizens data even outside of European Union, they have to follow. GDPR compliances. Privacy objectives of GDPR protect the privacy rights, uniform regulation across European Union, uniform cross border data transfer, address the online data privacy concern that is very important because we are sharing lot of information in online words. In offline also we share like with the government, we are sharing our fingerprints, we are sharing our biometrics, you know. Uh, so, that is like working with government, but in online world there is no like a concern it is you and the companies you are sharing a lot of data. Facilitate the economic activities with uniform privacy requirement and harmonize the regulatory oversight. In United States they also have it has sectorial laws to deal with matters of digital privacy such as US Privacy Act 1974. Uh, Grama Leach uh, Bile Act, uh, then no explicit right to privacy in the constitution, limited constitution rights to privacy implied in number of provisions in the Bill of Rights. Privacy law conflicts, EU versus United States. So, these are the two major jurisdictions who are having strong privacy law right now. US lobbied EU for two years to convince it that the US system is adequate. Result was the safe harbor agreement July 20, 2000, US companies would voluntarily self certify to adhere to the state of privacy principle worked out by the US Department of uh, Commerce and Internal Market Directorate of the European Commission. Little enforcement, a self regulatory system in which companies merely promised not to violate their declared privacy practice, it looks good, but it is very hard to enforce. Criticized by the private advocate, privacy advocates and consumer groups in both US and Europe. Agreement re-evaluated in 2003, the main issue European Commission doubted uh, effectiveness of this sectorial or self-regulatory approach. So, there are two uh, approaches here that self-regulatory approach that we do not need a privacy law, you know we just need to make aware all these uh, data collection companies that how to use this data, what to do, what not to do and ultimately they should introduce their own rules and regulations within the company. As a government we should not intervene too much. See I think this philosophy is very clear from EU and US that US is more trusting on the companies that they will not do anything wrong and the EU approach is that no, I think we believe that if something going, something is wrong the government or the state should intervene, make the rules and regulations and finally uh, force the companies to comply with those regulations and rules and if they do not then there should be some enforcement mechanism, punishment mechanism. So, you can clearly see that in EU and US there are two different approaches. Okay. In US they like not intervention in the market or maybe less intervention in the market. They believe that market is uh, mature enough, they are self correcting, if there is something wrong they will correct itself and we do not need to intervene a lot. In the 
EU they because it is that is why I am saying that India and EU they are very nearby in terms of thought process because in India also we believe that if something is wrong government should intervene government should try to correct this situation. Okay. So, this is like the EU and the US situation. Recent trends of fines for violation of the European Union landmark privacy law. So, let us see how the European privacy law is working right now. Fines of violation of the European Union landmark privacy law has showed nearly sevenfold in the past year. Okay. So, it is like they are increasing almost 700 percentage. EU data protection authorities have handed out a total of 1.2 billion in fines over breaches of the blocks journal data regulation since 2000 uh, January 28, uh, 2021. That is up from about 180 million in a year earlier. So, you can clearly see that before two years the penalty was if I talk about in terms of rupees then it is almost like uh, you can say around 1100 uh, just wait uh, 100 million is like 900 crore. So, yeah. So, two years back the penalty was almost 1600 crore rupees okay, 1600 crore rupees and in last year only the penalty moved to 1.2 billion euro that that means almost 40 a 13,000 crore rupees. So, from 100, 600 crore rupees to 13,000 crore rupees, you can easily see that how European data privacy authority is aggressive in terms of imposing penalties on those companies who are not respecting the data privacy law. Okay. Notification of data breach from firms to regulators climbed more modestly by 8 percent to 356 percent a day on average. Okay. Companies are required to demonstrate a clear legal basis to collect and process users personal data and firms must notify authorities about any data breach within 72 hours of first becoming aware of it. So, if something goes wrong in your company in the European Union, if you believe that the data has been leaked or there is some security concern, you cannot hide it. You have to inform the European uh, Union data privacy authority and you have to inform your customers and consumers also that we have, we have faced a serious issue. Because once you start disclosing this fact to the regulators and to the people, then the companies are more aware about the uh, importance of the protection of the data. Failure to comply can result in a potentially hefty fines namely up to 4 percent of companies annual global revenue or 20 million euro uh, 20 million euros whichever is the bigger amount. So, that is a huge amount when I say 20 million is like almost 180 crore rupees fine. So, if they do not inform the European Commission or the data privacy authority that yes we have faced a problem then they can uh, go for up to 180 crore rupees fine. GDPR has certainly been effective in making everyone sit up and listen to data protection law and data protection enforcement. So, before the GDPR people were talking about data privacy, but more in self correcting mechanism that I do not worry we will take care of data we are more serious about data, but in, in reality companies were not investing enough to protect the data, to take care of the data. But now because there is a GDPR, so in Europe at least the companies are very serious. And I must tell you one thing that uh, when I say Europe means not only the European Union countries, even suppose the Indian IT companies like the TCS, Infosys, SEL, all these companies if they are dealing with the European customers and if they are collecting any data from the Europe sitting in India, they are legally responsible for GDPR. They have to comply with all rules and regulations of that uh, particular uh, data because the European Union law or the European data protection law talks about the company's annual global turnover. It is not the European turnover. So, if the TCS does something wrong, the TCS global turnover will be affected. Okay. 
prior to GDPR if you got hit with a fine and you are aware you are one of the bigger uh, processor it was a rounding error. It would barely pay for the Christmas party now you got fines that are close to a million dollar. So, before the GDPR there were some privacy laws, but the fines were so less like 5000 dollar, 10000 dollar. So, obviously, nobody was you know very much worried about those penalties, but in 2020 so EU regulators imposed record fines under GDPR with big tech taking the brunt of the penalties. Like for example, Luxembourg's privacy watchdog fined uh, Amazon for 746 million euros. Okay. While authorities in Ireland slapped Meta, Meta is like the Facebook, WhatsApp with 225 million euro penalty. Both fines are in process of appealing the respective fines. So, you can see Luxembourg is a very small country, very, very small, but they impose almost like 746 million. When I say, when I multiply this money uh, with the Indian currency, it goes to almost 60,000 crore rupees. So, 60,000 crore rupees penalty on Amazon by the Luxembourg and the Ireland also imposed penalty around I can say uh, 20,000 uh, 20, Indian crore rupees uh, on the Facebook in the Ireland. So, you can easily see when such type of penalties are being imposed by the data privacy regulators then only companies you know start taking uh, these things very seriously. Case laws on personal data under EU data protection law like the BARA 2015 case, tax data transferred are personal data since they are information relating to a identify or identifiable nature. Okay. So, in these cases we are trying to explain that what is privacy data. So, tax details you know we cannot say that tax details are public information it is a very very private information and the companies has to be very careful while they are sharing that tax details with anyone. Uh, McLug personal uh, does not mean private surname in minutes are personal data even when the minutes refer to minutes in connection with the exercise of their public duties and not in the private sphere the surnames were published in the internet. So, even if I say what is my surname that is very my personal you know my name could be public but maybe I want to keep my surname very privately. Brayer 2016 a dynamic IP address registered by an online media service provider when a person assesses a website that the provider makes accessible to the public constitute public personal data within the meaning of that provision in relation to the provider where the latter has the legal means which enable it to identify the data subject with additional data which the internet service provider has about that person. Okay. Planet 49 it is a latest case in 2019 cookie data is personal data where the cookies like to placed on the terminal equipped for a user participating in a promotional lottery contained a number assigned to the registration data. So, when I say cookies you know cookies are cooking cookies are collecting lot of data from your computer from your mobile. So, when you open a website they ask you whether you accept all the cookies or not and once you say yes it means that those cookies are permanently installed in your computer and they are collecting lot of data from your computer. So, that data will be protected under the data protection law. By linking that number with the data a connection between a person and the data stored by the cookie arises therefore, data is not anonymous data. Fashion ID 2019 in this situation in a situation such as data issue in the main proceeding in which the operator of a website embeds on what website a social plugin causing the browser of a visitor to that website request content from the provider of that plugin and to the end the transmit to the provider personal data to the visitor. So, the court held that it is necessary that the operator and the providers each pursue a legitimate interest though through processing operations in order for those operations to be justified in respect of each of them. So, a common approach how see you have seen some cases where they are focusing on the specific nature of the data. Uh, so, let us see what is the common approach. 
A common approach is privacy impact, privacy impact assessment. So when you work in an organization, if you are dealing with privacy issues, you can use this pattern privacy impact assessment. An evolution conducted to assess how the adoption of new information policies, the procurement of new computer system or the in initiation of new data collection program will affect individual privacy. So, whenever you are adopting a new information mechanism, you are, you are choosing a new technology, first you need to assess you know how it is going to collect the data, store the data, assess the data. So, this assessment will help you, this evaluation process will help you to understand the possible legal liabilities. The premise, considering privacy issue at the early stage of a project cycle will reduce potential adverse impact on privacy after it has been implemented. So, first you need to understand that privacy issues are very sensitive in nature. Once it is done, it is done, you cannot undo it, you know, you understand. So, suppose if the data is leaked from your system, you cannot undo the situation. You cannot go back and say, okay, we are correcting the situation, nothing will happen. Because on the online world, if something has happened, it has happened, nobody can change it, okay. So, you need to consider privacy issues at the early stage of your business, you know, if when you are trying to do something. From the beginning, please try to understand what could be the legal, regulatory and technical issues uh, in terms of privacy in this my new model. Okay. So, if you understand it, you can implement also very easily. Requirements, PIA process should be independent, PIA performed by an independent entity, office or by commissioner not linked to the project under the review. So, if you give this job, this PIA, privacy impact assessment to the same person who is implementing that project, then do not expect that he will come up with the shortcomings or the lacunas or the issues with that project. So, you need to hire someone who is an independent, the expert independent person who can review the entire project, who can review the entire business strategy, technological uh, advancement and accordingly he can tell you these things. Okay. So, participating countries in this approach is US, EU and Canada and some other developed countries. So, let us talk about initiative in India now. Okay. So, Information Technology Act 2000, it provides for safeguard against certain breaches in relation to the data from the computer system. It contains provisions to prevent the unauthorized use of computer, computer system and data stored there. So, so your data is protected under the Information Technology Act 2000. So, if someone is hacking your computer, someone is accessing your computer or mobile or any electronic device without your consent or copying the data, changing the data, transferring the data, so that type of activity can be punishable under Information Technology Act. So, legal vacuum for data protection, the data protection provisions under the IT Act also do not apply to the government agencies. Okay. This creates a large vacuum for data protection when governments are collecting and processing large amount of personal data. So, so first thing is uh, government is not included, second the IT Act does not talk about that voluntary data collection, IT Act talks about if someone is involuntary taking your data, transferring the data, changing the data without your consent. So, that is a separate situation. Here a new situation has arisen in last 10 years where we are, al we are allowing firms to collect our data. So, there is no theft or involuntariness or you know uh, unlawful uses of your uh, data. So, we are giving our data by our own choice. So, then IT law, IT act will not uh, solve this problem. So, IT Act was enacted in 2000 and further amendment in 2008. However, technology and cross-platform integration have increased amazingly. See, IT Act was enacted in 2000. So, by that time, if you know okay, Google was there, but Facebook was not there, WhatsApp was not there, Twitter was not there and uh, so like the face, uh, obviously Facebook was not there, uh, YouTube was not there. So, most of the all established uh, IT platforms, social media platforms, they were not present during that time. So, they never anticipated that what type of uh, 
data privacy issues can be created by these companies. So, it is IT act is not a like a good solution to protect our data. Associated issues with the uh, uh, IT act issue of consent data aggregator entities could override the protections in the regime by taking users consent to process personal data under broad terms and conditions. So, under IT act you can only uh, file a case when someone is taking your data without your consent. In this case the data aggregator ent entities like suppose you want to install uh, Facebook so uh, or any application nowadays. Uh, then they ask you at the time of download that please allow us to collect your data, your phone book, we can listen your mobile, we, you know basically you are giving complete access to your mobile in uh, present and in future. So, in that situation maybe this date, uh, this you know uh, issue of consent will not help the people and obviously the government is absolutely outside of the preview of the uh, IT act. But uh, uh, we should not forget that government is the biggest data collection authority, you know, because like for example, Aadhaar, you know, I am not saying Aadhaar is not good, Aadhaar is a good thing as per my understanding because all uh, good, uh, good countries are having national ID card. So, I do not see any problem with having a national ID card, but when you say they, they have a billion people's data then they are responsible also you know they cannot abuse this data they cannot do something in their own interest without the consent of the people because we have given our consent in terms of only having a national id card you know because once the government starts using the data that data for some other purposes then i think we need to intervene and we need to stop neglecting data privacy the framework under IT Act emphasized data security, not but not place enough emphasis on data privacy. So, data security and data privacy they are two different things. Data security issue is that your data will be secure, nobody can touch it, you know, without your approval, and if someone does it, it is a criminal offense. Data privacy is that people will have your data, you know, because you are sharing with them and uh, directly or indirectly they will have your data, you know. Because if they do not have your data, they cannot run their business, you know that their business is very much depending on having your data. Okay. So, there are two different things. Here we are not focusing on the security, we are focusing on the privacy part that you can have my data that is ok. You use it for legitimate purposes in your business, but if once you start uh, you know doing something wrong against my privacy, then there can be a legal issue. In essence, while entities must employ technical measures to protect personal data, they have weaker obligations to respect users preferences in how personal data can be uh, processed. So, see when we say ok now you have a data, but I want to know how you are going to process. If the company says ok we are going to give your data to the private companies uh, for sale and then they will contact you for marketing. In that scenario you can say no sorry, you need to take my permission. So, I say no, uh, this data you cannot share with anyone. So, this is your data, this is your property and if companies are using your property uh, for their own businesses that is ok because it is a new business model. However, now the idea is that uh, while you are using my property because uh, uh, data is my property you are dealing with my data. So, I must have right to decide that for what purpose you can use my data. Okay. It cannot be like an open ended field that you can do whatever with my data. This is my data. So, I must have the legal rights to choose what will you do with my data. So, when I talk about the Indian Data Privacy Protection Bill 2019, the Supreme Court maintained the right to privacy is a fundamental right in the landmark decision of K S Puttaswamy versus Union of India 2017. We will talk about this case later on. After which the union government had appointed Justice B N Krishnan committee for proposing scattered legislature in the discipline of data protection. The committee came up with its report and draft legislature in the form of Personal Data Protection Bill 2018. In 2019. The parliament again revised the bill 
and much deviation from the 2000 bill 18 was evident. The new will was amended as a personal data protection bill 2019. The purpose of this bill is to provide for the protection of privacy of individuals relating to their personal data and to establish a data protection authority of India for the said purposes and the matters concerning the personal data of an individual. It is a commonly referred to as the privacy bill and intends to protect individual rights by regulating the collection, movement and processing the data that is personal or which can identify the individuals. The bill is landmark legislature meant to regulate how various companies and organizations use individual data inside India. The 2019 draft of the bill proposed to the formation of a data protection authority DPA which would regulate the use of personal data by social media companies and other organizations within the country. So, let us talk about little bit about this judgment which really created lot of debate in our country to have a right of privacy. Constitutional validity of Aadhaar card was challenged by Justice K. S. Putta Swami. The judgment given in this case by the bench given a new perspective to the right to privacy of the citizens. It was held that the right of privacy is a fundamental right under Article 14, 19 and 21 of Indian Constitution. The Honorable Court, the Supreme Court upheld the Aadhaar Act and struck down the provision of the act which was unconstitutional. It was held by the court that the right to privacy of the citizen has to be protected as an instinct part of the right of life and personal liberty under article 21 and as a part of freedom guaranteed by part 3 of the constitution. The court explicitly overruled the previous landmark judgments of the Supreme Court uh, Kharak Singh versus State of UP and MP Sharma versus Satish Chandra in which it was held that the right to privacy is not a fundamental right of the citizen under the Indian constitution. So, students oh, uh, how these judgments uh, has changed the entire uh, discussion in India that before this law, before this uh, judgment in few cases like the Kharak Singh and MP Sharma it was held by the Supreme Court that right to privacy is not a fundamental right. It can be a legal right if the government wants to make a law, but now the government has the, the you know the government has enacted the Aadhaar card. So, people challenge the this particular act whether people can be forced to share their private data to the government or not. So, in the interest of the national security and the other factors the Supreme Court held that yeah we are not saying that Aadhaar Act is illegal or unconstitutional. However, we are declaring right to privacy is a constitutional right under article 21. So, when it becomes a constitutional right means that if you believe that your privacy is being infringed by the government or by anyone, now you can approach to uh, high court and supreme court directly because without having the constitutional protection you cannot go to high court and supreme court. So, this judgment really made a huge jump in the terms of data protection law in India. Concerns related to personal data protection bill 2019. It is like a two sided salt while it protects the personal data of Indians by empowering them with the data principal rights. On the other hand, it gives the central government with exemptions which are against the principle of processing personal data. So, it is you know it is giving a lot of power to citizen, but at the same time it is giving a lot of power to central government also to have the uh, personal data of citizens. The government can process even sensitive personal data when needed without explicit permission from the data principle. So, this is like one of the objection by the most of the data privacy advocates and uh, ad, uh, and the groups you know that the central government should also come under this data protection bill. However, the central government wants to be exempted from this uh, obligation. Then finally, data protection bill 2021 came to 2029 uh, could not see the light of the legislature. So, finally, in 2021 after two years of deliberation, the Parliamentary Joint Committee on the Personal Data Protection 2019 JPC tabled its report. 
the re reports are included with a redrafted re version of the law named the data protection bill 2021 so if we can see like you know i think there's a huge uh, if and but for and against uh, by the different stakeholders like 2018 data protection bill came 2019 it came 2021 it came but still in 2022 we are not seeing any law because you know if you see the implication of this law is so huge on the private companies on the government so obviously it's a lot of you know maybe the lobbying is happening or you know deliberations are happening that uh, how to introduce this law in our country but i believe that when we have seen already a very successful law in european union like in terms of gdpr i don't see very much you know uh, challenges for the government or any other regulatory body to enact and implement data privacy law in india the key takeaways from the report 2021 change the name and scope of the bill the jpc reports has changed the name of the draft law from the personal data protection bill to the data protection bill okay so they have removed personal from here inclusion of non personal data also the committee has said that the pdp the personal data bill should cover both sets of data till an additional framework is established to distinguish between personal and non personal data so all types of data will be included under this bill exemptions for government bodies the jpc reports retains the controversial clause providing that the central government will have the authority to exempt any agency of the government from the provision of this act however this is this will be the subject matter to just fair reasonable and professional procedure okay and see you can see it's like both side you know the government wants to maybe give exemption to some uh, agencies like the ib cbi or some more intelligence agencies some important agencies which are protecting the national interest like the ncb uh, you know narcotics bureau so the government's idea that those agencies should not come under the preview of data protection law however whenever exemption will be given to them then that exemption must be based on the just fair and reasonable terms and conditions data breach the committee has recommended that clause 25 sub clause 3 includes a 72 hours reporting period of data breach it is just like the european data protection law children's data that's very important section 3 sub clause 8 of the bill defines a child as a person who has not completed 18 years of age data fiduciaries processing children data have a different set of obligations to follow including getting consent from a parent or a guardian before processing the child data so this has become a huge responsibility on companies that if someone is 17 year old uh, just to get their approval from their parents or guardian data protection in the financial sector the committee has recommended a home grown alternative to the shift payment system to ensure privacy and to boost the domestic economies swift you know we use this mechanism to transfer money here from one place to another place from india to abroad so the committee has recommended that in india we should ha have our own system of financial transactions so that we can protect the uh, private and commercial sensitive data regulations of social media it says that all social media platform that do not act as intermediaries should be treated as a publishers and be held accountable for the content they host it has also said that no social media platform should be allowed to operate in india unless the permanent company set up an office in the country to regulate them in lines with the press council of india so what they want that now all these social media companies should be treated just like a publication houses so whatever people are publishing on the social media platform uh, obviously they are responsible for their behavior but at the same time social media platform should also be responsible for their content okay they cannot say that we are only platform and we really can't control what people are posting on our social media platform the the proposed law says no you have to take care of it okay and then another thing is that you have to have some physical presence in country like the tiktok you know the tiktok never had an office in india 
so there are so many social media platforms operating in india right now and they have no physical office in india so if something goes wrong we cannot prosecute them data localization the committee has asked the government to ensure that a mirror copy of sensitive and critical personal data which may be already stored by foreign entities outside the country should mandatory be bought back with a specified time frame they want that indian data the data by of the indian by the indians must be stored only in india there should not be any any copy outside of india the conclusion is the data protection bill is a much delayed you know you can see all big countries they have already introduced the law they are putting lot of penalties on companies so still in 2022 we are not having this law this is much delayed and much needed legislature and will replace the current uh, the laws which are not able to give appropriate solutions as compared to the current standard it will help protect the privacy rights of individuals and promote fair and transparent use of data for innovation and growth unlocking the digital economy we want to promote our digital economy so it means that when things are becoming more and more digital at the same time we need an authority and law to protect the data it has the potential to create employment increase user awareness about their privacy and enforce accountability with data fiduciaries and processors though inspired in part by the eu general data protection regulation india has ultimately forged its own path towards data protection with unique provisions like combining personal and prof- uh, non personal data under the same umbrella data localization coverage of hardware devices managing social media platform and more okay so i think we are moving even sometime in a better direction than to the european union though it has server lucanas where implemented it will bring india on par with other countries with strong data protection laws compliance will do well to start preparing for the compliance with other provisions so i think with these things i believe you have understood that why data protection is important and how the government should enact a law so that all the it companies social media platform and whosoever even the banks financial institution whosoever is collecting your personal or non personal data should uh, protect your data first of all and you must have some legal right to give your consent for the utilization of your data for their commercial purposes so with these words i hope that you have understood the uh, uh, data protection law importance and how it is going to uh, create more value in our uh, digital economy thank you